Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I'm Jasmine. If you don't already know me, my boyfriend Chris and I run this channel, Sweet Simple Vegan. We talk about everything, basically. Vegan recipes, we do vlogs, lifestyle tips. I also did like hair care, skincare routine. Now I'm gonna talk about anxiety. Uh, we talk about things that pertain to our lives that hopefully you guys can relate to, that you guys can take something from and um, I wanted to talk about my anxiety because obviously it's something that I struggle with and I've talked about it a bunch on Instagram and a lot of people struggle with anxiety. I want to be able to help as much as I can. I'm not an expert at this but since I have first-hand experience um, I thought that maybe this could help. I asked for some questions on Instagram, some topic suggestions. I have them on my phone now. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over everything. Basically, I'm going to talk about like the topics you guys suggested, talk about my struggles with anxiety, how I deal with it, and all of that. Um, so if you guys want to keep watching, learn about those things. No, I said that up. I said that wrong. If you guys want to learn about those things, just keep watching. So first and foremost, this is the... I need to sit up straight. This is the third time I'm filming this video, not gonna lie. And um, I don't know, I was just like super nervous about the other two. I wasn't happy with them. I wanted it to be perfect. And um, I had actually just recently asked for questions for topics because the other ones I wasn't sure if it was exactly what you guys would have wanted me to cover. So I'm feeling more confident with these topics that you guys suggested. Um, a little background before we get started. So anxiety is one of the most prevalent mental health disorders, about 1 in 14 people struggle with it and it can actually serve as a high risk for things like suicide, for depression and other, other health risks that um, we definitely want to avoid and I just feel like it's important for me to address because a lot of people don't realize what anxiety is and there are, there is anxiety in like everyone's life um, but anxiety disorder is very different. So I was diagnosed when I was 18. Um, I was actually diagnosed with anxiety and depression. I was struggling with an eating disorder. I was basically at the lowest point of my life. And um, it was something that I didn't take seriously. I remember going into my therapist's office and like just speaking with her and then she like handed me a piece of paper. She's like, okay, here, like you need to go get this medication and da 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 da. And like I had no idea what was happening. And then I realized that she had diagnosed me with anxiety and depression. And I just, at the time, I just like threw away the slip. I was like, I'm not going to get this medication. She has no idea what she's talking about. I was embarrassed. I felt ashamed. I felt like admitting that I had anxiety and I struggled with depression would, I guess, bring me to a lower state in other people's eyes. I felt like it would make me seem that I was, like I was not normal. And with everything that I was struggling with, I just wanted to be, I guess, accepted. And so... I just like kept it at the back of my mind. I just disregarded it and I thought that if I just didn't think about it, it would kind of go away. And I actually stopped going to therapy because I convinced myself that I was fine, that I didn't need it anymore. And I did eventually heal from my eating disorder. I had group therapy that I went to separately for that and that really helped me out. Um, just like lumping all that together, I was like, okay, I'm good, done with this, packing up this chapter of my life, stepping away and moving on. That really isn't the case. Um, that's not really how this works. Um, I am happy to say that I do not struggle with eating disorder and I have definitely improved my relationship with food um, tremendously in the past, I guess that was like seven years ago. Oh my god, that was seven years ago. Um, and it, it took time. It wasn't easy. And it, it's still to this day like something I keep in the back of my mind and something I, of course, don't want to fall into. So generalized anxiety disorder is like I said earlier, is different from anxiety. So anyone can experience anxiety. Like let's say you have a big test coming up and you're like really nervous about it, you're anxious about it, you don't know what's gonna come out of it. Or like you're gonna take your SATs or like something of that sort. Like you get anxious about that, that's pretty normal. But then it goes away after the test, it goes away after you get your scores and you're good. Um, generalized anxiety disorder is different. You do feel that, that anxiety, but it doesn't really go away and you feel that anxiety for sometimes no apparent reason. I'm like just sitting, working, sitting, hanging out, going to bed, like waking up in the morning and I just feel like this rush of anxiety, stress, and I'm like kind of like a freak out basically. And that's kind of the only way I know how to explain it. Um, it's something that I feel like is out of my control. Sometimes I feel like it takes over my life 
And yeah, again, it's like not something that we can brush off. It's not for a particular reason. So I'm gonna cover basically the topics you guys suggested, um, give my two cents, and talk to you guys about what I do to manage my anxiety and all of that jazz. So something that really helps with my anxiety is getting a good night's sleep, but a question that you guys were asking is how I deal with like not being able to sleep, feeling anxious at night, which is actually one of the most common things for me. That's when I feel the most anxiety for some reason, for no apparent reason. I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, but I'm gonna try my best. Um, but basically, well, you're gonna have to watch the whole video to like get the gist of like what I'm gonna say now. But basically, managing your anxiety throughout the whole day leading up to you going to bed can really make a difference. Because if it's kind of like piling on or like building up, like you're gonna go to bed and like everything's gonna hit you because you're like, it's just you and your mind when you're going to bed, you know? And like that's what you're gonna be focusing on. If you feel restless and you feel like you can't go to bed, then something that you can do is actually get out of bed and do something that will kind of tire yourself out or like watch something that hopefully will put you right to sleep or something of that sort. Um, you can get up and like, sometimes I just like edit photos for a little while, honestly. And I thought that like stepping, stepping away from work and like not doing anything and just like laying and like forcing myself to sleep was gonna help me, but it, it really didn't. And the more I tried to force it, the more it didn't happen. So that's something that you can do, like get out of bed for a little while and like get yourself tired. Another thing that was recommended to me by actually one of you guys is a weighted blanket. So I guess it brings more of like a comfort while you're sleeping. You feel kind of swaddled and like tucked in. I personally haven't used one of those. So I don't have any experience with it, but I actually can sleep better when Barry is like on top of me, which I realize might be something similar, something of that sort. Maybe you can have your partner cuddle you at night. Maybe that can help. And then, um, Honestly, sometimes you just gotta cry it out. So I feel like that kind of just like ha helps me like push everything out and just like kind of push through it. Don't feel ashamed, don't feel embarrassed, and don't, don't try to avoid doing that. Like you're gonna have to work through it whichever way like you need to. And I always feel so much better after a good cry. So I don't know, I feel like that sounds weird to say because maybe you might assume the opposite, but it really helps me, it really helps me feel better. I'll answer the most frequently asked questions. So I would love to hear you talk about medication. I know this may be controversial. I personally don't take it. I personally um, don't plan on it, but um, I'm not against it. Okay, so my diagnosis and therapy process, if I'm comfortable sharing. So I am comfortable sharing. Um, basically, I went to therapy for a little while, like I told you guys before. I was kind of like, after I was diagnosed, I kind of like freaked out and like just shut off from it but I'm actually actively looking for a therapist in the area. I felt like I could talk to Chris about it, I could talk to my parents about it, but no one could really fully understand or like, not that they're doing a bad job, but I feel like talking to a professional, talking to someone who is more aware of the situation can help me more. Um, and I would recommend it, like from personal experience, from, for example, when I struggled with an eating disorder, I went to group therapy and I think that's what honestly helped me heal. Talking to people who struggle with what I sh struggle with what I struggle with um, really helped put things into perspective. I didn't feel alone and I was confident because if they could work through it, I felt like so could I. So I guess that's a good way to put it. So if, like, if you're feeling alone, if you feel like you don't have anyone to talk to or like you don't have anyone that will understand, I think that a therapist is the person that you should turn to. Okay, so do you get panic attacks with your anxiety and how are you in crowded places? So I actually, I don't really get panic attacks in crowded places if I'm not alone. Um, I don't like, I don't usually go out alone because I don't feel comfortable. I'm like not the type of person that would just like show up to a place and not know anyone and make friends. Like that is not me. That is asking for a panic attack for me. So I kind of avoid that. Um, I used to be ashamed of that. I felt like I needed to be more um, self-reliant and more confident in myself but that's just not who I am and I just feel extreme discomfort when I go into situations like that so I just kind of try to avoid it but yeah if I'm in a crowded place with someone like if, if with Chris or Caitlin or whoever like I feel way more comfortable um, and then in terms of panic attacks so yes I do get panic attacks but I feel like those are more so at night when I'm feeling super anxious like that kind of just is when it happens and it's hard to explain um, a panic attack, but I'm gonna try my best to. Um, it's like the weirdest feeling. Sometimes I feel like I'm like 
it's like an out of body experience. I feel like super tense. I feel like my jaw is like clenching. I feel like my body is like warm and like vibrating, I guess. I don't really know how to fully explain it. Um, I just feel really weird. And like, I feel like I just want to like get out of my body and not feel that because I literally feel it to my fingertips. Uh, like I was saying before, like managing your anxiety as a whole throughout the day will help, or not even just throughout the day, I'm gonna say that for myself though, because I usually have panic attacks at night, but managing my anxiety throughout the day as a whole is what really helps me avoid my panic attacks, and when I do have a panic attack, I try to like tell myself, like, don't freak out that you're having a panic attack, don't be ashamed or disappointed or mad that you're having one, you're gonna need to work through it, you're gonna need to, yeah, just push through it and then work the next day and in the future to avoid them or to like prevent them. Um, so that's like a good way, like don't bring negative thoughts into your mind when you're experiencing it because that's going to make it so much worse. Um, so like I guess what I'm going to say now is all of the things I'm going to mention for like managing a panic attack, try to focus on doing these things before you have a panic attack as well because it will really help prevent it. So like this is what I do, I lay down, um, I just like try not to do anything, focus on anything, but just like take a minute to myself, get into my bed or couch or whatever and just like kind of just chill, like get into like a perfect, really relaxed, calming state. Music kind of freaks me out sometimes um, when I'm like really stressed out. It just brings up the stress, brings up the anxiety. So in most cases, I will turn off music if I'm playing it or like watching TV or anything. And if you're out in public or if like you're with friends or whatever, if you're not alone, like do what you need to do. If you need to step away, if you need to go home, if you need to do whatever, if you need to go sit in your car, like you just gotta do you because if you just try to if you just try to work through it and like force yourself to do it in like a public situation or whatever it may be, it isn't the best idea because I feel like it doesn't really it doesn't really do much to help prevent it or work through it. It might actually heighten it and make it worse or like build up to like have another one later on that day. And then lastly, like I was mentioning before, don't freak out that you're having a panic attack. Don't think negatively that you are. You're just gonna have to think positively to work through it. Um, tell yourself that it's okay that you're having one and tell yourself that it's going to be okay. I know that when I'm having one, that's the last thing I wanna hear. Like sometimes when the Chris is comforting me and like telling me like you need to like, it's okay, like relax, like that kind of stresses me out more. Um, but I think that it's all like a learning process. It's all trying to figure out works, what works best for you. I like to just take deep breaths and think about things that make me happy and um, tell myself that I've worked through this before, I've pushed through this before, and it's, it's gonna be okay. So what to do if your family thinks you're being dramatic and doesn't think that you have a real problem. So what really helped me was like an actual diagnosis from um, a doctor or therapist because just me telling it to my family wasn't really, I guess, enough for them to fully understand. But once like my doctor said it, then they were like, okay, like maybe it's something we need to think about and it's like a serious situation. Unfortunately, I feel like that's the case for a lot of people because you can just go online, search like WebMD and like diagnose yourself. If you have, I guess, like a legitimate diagnosis that can help really put things into perspective for people. So social anxiety, <sighs> that is like the worst thing for me. Um, like I mentioned before, I don't, I just, I realize that if I go into a social situation alone, that's asking for like a panic attack and problems for me mentally. But if I go into it with like a comfort of a friend or like a group of people, it really helps me. And I know that this is like, isn't the best advice for like stepping into the real world on your own and like working through things by yourself. But like, honestly, it's just not practical for me to to do, um, I've tried, I, I was like, I just need to like push through this and get over my fears and whatnot, but it's just not who I am. I'm not a confident person on my own. I am not the type of person that'll like, again, make friends in like a random group or in a, a room of random people and going into situations with someone who can help me feel comfort has really helped me a lot. So what was your anxiety like when it was at its worst? So. Um, I actually started feeling my worst um, anxiety when I graduated from college. So I don't know if this happened to you guys, but like after I graduated, it was just constantly like, oh, like what'd you get a degree in? What are your plans? Like what's next? What's the next step? What job are you getting? Blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, ha ha, I don't know. I don't know. 
So it honestly just like started freaking me out. I started to look at all my classmates and see what they were doing. Start thinking about like, should that be what I'm doing? Should I like be applying for a master's program? Should I be looking for um, an internship? Should I be doing clinicals? Like it was just like, um, and just to like, just to clarify, I went to school with the plan of being a registered dietitian. I did a, it's called a DPD program and it didn't include the internship in it and I didn't get to do clinicals or anything with my program. So what was supposed to happen was I was gonna graduate and then go into a master's program and then do my clinicals then. But after I graduated, I was really focused on like social media, my blog and all of that. And it was kind of just like I was looking at everyone around me. No one was doing what I was doing and no one really understood what I was doing, so it started to freak me out, and I was like, maybe I made the wrong decision, maybe I should have taken school more seriously, and maybe I should actually become a registered dietitian and have like a more reliable job. Um, and so I started to do more research into it, um, and I just remember like having panic attacks every single night. I just remember like shaking in bed, and Chris like, this is like one of the first times it like was consistently happening and then one of the first times that I really recognized it happening. So I didn't know what to do, he didn't know what to do and I honestly kind of just told him like just ignore it, don't think about it and I did the same. I just ignored it and didn't think about it and I thought that I was just freaking out for no reason and that I would kind of push through it but I realized that was not the case and me ignoring it and not managing anything was making it even worse and it got to the point, like I said, it was happening every single day. So I started to look more into it and um, I went back to the fact that my doctor or my therapist diagnosed me with um, anxiety disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, because I had ignored it previously. I thought they were crazy. Um, but once I started doing more research on it, learning more about managing anxiety and what it was, um, I was like, well, they were right. I uh, definitely should not have ignored them. And I started to like, I guess, take my mental health more into consideration. And that is like when I felt so much better, so much more like comfortable in my body and in my mind. I felt more myself. Um, and it's just like when my life started to feel like it was coming into place, I realized I didn't need to become a registered dietitian if I didn't want to anymore. I went to school for nutrition. I loved every single second of it, but I realized it's not the career path I wanted to go down and that's okay. My friends and family always asking me what my job was. I was just like, you know what? I don't know and I'm going to figure it out and I'll let you know. Like I kind of just like told them how it was and everyone's like, okay, like whatever. I was more confident in my decisions, what I was doing. And I feel like managing my anxiety really helped with that. Um, it was just a matter of like doing what I realized would help me. Not everyone struggles with the same things with generalized anxiety disorder and not everything will help everyone. Um, it's kind of a learning process, unfortunately, but you're going to be able to do it because I was able to do it. I was at my worst. I thought that I would never be able to manage it and I did and I'm confident that you will too. So I rambled a lot on that question, um, but I just wanted to like Put all the pieces together and fully explain when I fully realized what was going on. If you ever had anxiety about public speaking and how you dealt with it. So I just like to tell myself that public speaking isn't for everyone. I have done it. I have spoken at like this veg fest thing called Circle V. I have spoken actually at veg fest, SoCal veg fest um, and veg fest LA. Um, I felt like I needed to do it because I'm like a YouTuber and the content creator and like this is what you do, but it, like it's just not me. Um, I know that for school it's necessary and I hated every second of it and I kind of pushed through it and freaked out, I know. I don't know, I kind of like thinking about how I'm not the only one freaking out. There are other people in the classroom and in the room like that hate public speaking and I'm not alone and that it'll be over in five to ten minutes or whatever it is if you have to do it. But um, from now on, I think that public speaking isn't really my forte and it's not something I'm going to actively participate in. So do you take any supplements for anxiety? So I do take CBD. Um, I, of course, I'm not, I don't have it here with me. It's in the other room and Chris is on the phone for work so I can't go in there. Um, but I'll put it right here, Alpin Organic CBD. I take their 1000 milligram tincture. It's their strongest one. They have a 300, a 600, and a 1000 milligram. 
and um, dosage wise I would suggest like playing around around with it and seeing what works best for you. So I'd recommend getting the 1000 milligram, just taking a smaller dosage of it and seeing how that helps and then taking more as needed. Um, but I have found that the 1000 really helps me with my anxiety and it's what I take every single day. Um, I usually take it during the day and then if needed I'll take it at night as well if I'm feeling a little anxious at night. But it has made a huge, huge difference in my life. Um, Honestly, I'm so grateful that I was introduced to it. I used to think that CBD was like THC and then I was going to get high and like it wasn't going to help me, but it's the complete opposite. It has a calming effect. It's not psychoactive um, and it's something that I highly recommend if you struggle with anxiety. It's definitely what I would recommend someone look into if you're not necessarily comfortable with taking medication. Um, I guess it's like a more natural thing to turn to at first or in general. Um, so I will link it down below for you guys to check out. I do have a discount code with them. This video is not associated with them at all. I'm super passionate about their product, what they're doing and all of that. And I can personally say that it has helped. It has changed my life. So I would recommend it for sure. In terms of dealing with anxiety. So I have a lot of people just asking like, what exactly I do to manage it. Um, how, how do you handle anxiety in your day-to-day -day life, basically? Um, that's like the most frequently asked question. I guess it's the most basic one, um, but I did make a list of things and I wanted to just talk about them really quick. For one thing, I really think that like what you put into your body really affects like your physical and your mental health. Um, focusing on eating a healthful diet, I believe makes a huge difference. When I eat healthfully, I feel like lighter, happier. And um, when I eat junk food, when I eat fatty foods, I always feel like bleh. I definitely feel like it affects my anxiety because like I have a harder time concentrating and it kind of just like snowballs from there. So like I mentioned before, healthier diet. I'm trying to get good sleep. Um, it's taking a while to figure out my schedule and do that, but it definitely helps. And like I mentioned before, like, ooh, working on your anxiety throughout the day will help with like restlessness at night and anxiety at night, and panic attacks and whatnot. Um, actively working on managing my anxiety has made a difference in all of my anxiety day and night. So exercise is of course like healthy, you need to do it, um, something we all gotta do. Um, but it's good for mental health and honestly like when I go to the gym, I kind of just like focus my mind on the workout. I don't focus on anything going on in my life. I try to stay off of social media, text messages and I just listen to music and zone in. And that really helps calm me down. I really love working out and lifting weights. I'm not like jacked or anything, but but it's fun. And um, I really think that it could help manage anxiety because it really just helps clear your mind. The gym is not the place for you. That's okay. Um, exercise can be in many forms. You can go outdoors. You can do it at home. You can do, go to like a yoga or like workout studio, Zumba, anything of that sort. Like whatever you're comfortable with, I say do it, dive into it, and I think it'll really help. So someone's asking about anxiety at the gym and how to overcome it. So I actually have an Instagram post where I talked about all this. Um, I don't have all of my tips here. I don't want to cover all of them because there's a lot. Um, but I have it on my Instagram. I'll link it down below if you guys want to check it out because it's specific to the gym. But those are like my top tips. Uh, caffeine and alcohol. So I started to read about how it can affect your anxiety. And I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I love coffee. I have actually been off of coffee for two months now, and I'm not caffeine free, but I started to drink matcha tea, matcha green tea instead of coffee, and I learned that the caffeine has different effects on your body, and I tested it out, and I can confidently say it does, honestly. I don't feel the jitters, I feel so much better throughout the day, I don't like crash in the middle of the day, um, and if I don't have matcha, I'm fine. Like, I don't feel like I need it. I don't feel like I can't begin my day without it. Um, so I would just recommend, like, if you struggle with anxiety, like, look how much caffeine you're consuming throughout the day. Like, caffeine can make you, like, antsy. It can make you irritable, jittery. And, like, cutting down on that, seeing what happens, I think that you're going to see a difference. And then in terms of alcohol... It can bring you up. It's like uplifting. You feel great. Um, this is like more referring to like you getting actually drunk. Um, like a drink or two once in a while is fine and I don't feel anxiety from it and I feel fine. But if I like get past that point, like you feel good but then the next day you feel like 
way down low you feel like shit and apparently it's anxiety provoking um i never really correlated those two and i never really thought about that but when i was like reading online about managing anxiety that's something that kept coming up so now it's something that i like avoid doing and i of course i feel so much better doing so i have a drink every so often it's actually halloween today um and i'm not gonna get like wasted or anything but it's just something that i like now i'm aware of and think about um, thinking about tomorrow, thinking about the future, what you can do to manage your anxiety, if that makes sense. That was like related, but also like in general, think about the future. Meditation, so this isn't something that I do often, um, but it's something that I'm trying to incorporate more into my life. It could be five minutes, two minutes, 10 minutes, just kind of, it's kind of going back to like me going to the gym and all that, it's just zoning out, just kind of focusing on the now, but in a positive way really helps like set your tone for the rest of the day really helps shift your mindset for the rest of the day and i know it sounds corny and cliche but honestly just try it like one minute a day even like one to two minutes and then increase it as you go but i think that like just taking a pause in the present moment and reflecting on that can really help in general it can help anyone like i think it just helps you be more positive and confident identifying what is anxiety provoking so this will vary from person to person but I think it's completely necessary because like I've been saying throughout the whole video, like you need to constantly be focusing on managing your anxiety because it's a thing, it's what you gotta do and it's a part of your life. It's not bad, um, but it's better if you are trying to work on it and paying attention to what provokes your anxiety is key and it will help you like avoid those situations or it'll help you be more prepared to work through those situations so you don't freak out. I don't wanna go into specifics there because like I said, like this will vary from person to person, but yeah, so I'm gonna throw that up there. So the next thing is like being vulnerable and then also like forgiving yourself. So for one thing, being vulnerable, that can, that can cover a lot of things, but it's accepting what is happening. You have, if you have an anxiety disorder, you have an anxiety disorder. It's not something like you should be ashamed of, but it's something that you should, I guess, embrace and work on and take the necessary steps that you need to take. I know sometimes it's hard to like tell other people because like I was saying in the beginning of the video, like I was ashamed, I didn't want anyone to know. I was like, oh no, that's that's wrong, I'm normal. And um, that wasn't the case. So like, just being vulnerable in that way, getting the help you need, taking the necessary steps for you to do you, for you to be your best, um, be at your best, feel your best, do your best in life. And then forgive yourself is like, I used to get so pissed off about feeling anxious. I used to I used to just like get mad at myself for it and tell myself like stop feeling this way, like you need to be more confident. You need to be better at A, B, and C and not let your anxiety get in the way. Bringing that negativity into my life and my mind was like not the best thing I could do. It's probably the worst thing I could do. Um, forgiving yourself in the sense like I forgive myself forever thinking negatively about my situation for every getting mad at myself and being negative about it. And now I try to do the opposite. I do, like I was saying, take the necessary steps that I need. Um, this is me, this is my life, this is what I gotta do. And it's better for me to work through it than to ignore it. So the next step is focusing on something less anxiety provoking, like I was mentioning before, like identifying what provokes your anxiety is one thing, but going further and doing things that'll help lessen the anxiety and help you like forget about it work through it and whatnot for me i love going to the gym and being active and like kind of focusing in that sense um but lately i've been learning the guitar it's been awesome it's like one of my favorite things to do because i'm like 100 percent focused on learning i am not focusing on anything else and just i don't know i just i don't even know how to explain it. i just feel so happy when i do it and i'm not the best i'm gonna be better in the future but it has been an amazing experience. And um, yeah, it's just like something that I turn to, to relax and to be with myself and to forget about what is going on, all the shitty things that happen throughout the day, trying not to let them get to me, that sort of thing. Whatever it is for you, I suggest you do it. And if you don't, if you do know what it is, just do it more. Um, and then finally, um, something that I know will help and something that I do 
to manage my anxiety is talk about it. Honestly, it's helping me a lot right now, like sharing all this with you. I feel like I've been talking so much and I hope it's not too much for you. But I feel so much better because I know that I'm not alone. I feel much more confident that like I have worked through all these, I've had shitty experiences, I've had positive experiences, and like I can use these to help other people. And I can also use them to help myself in the future. I can like look back at what I did to have the situation and negatively and what I did to have the situation and positively and like go to the positive route of course but um talking it out can also refer to <clears throat> oh my gosh I'm like talking so fast I'm like out of breath right now talking it out can also refer to talking to your partner talking to your parents talking to your friends like letting others know what is going on and going to therapy there's nothing wrong with it it's actually better if you go because it is necessary in some or most situations. I want to again reiterate the fact that I was ashamed. I was ashamed that I struggled with anxiety. I was ashamed that I was going to therapy and like I had such a negative association with it for no reason. Like I now think that there's like a negative association with me ignoring it and not doing what I need to do, not managing my mental health, ignoring that, not taking the steps I needed to take. So talk it out whatever way it may be. You're gonna feel so much better. Okay, this one's a good one. Best tip to tell your partner when you have an anxiety attack or spike. This is this is gonna be, I'm just gonna talk about like, I guess what we do. It's not gonna apply to every single situation, um, but I hope it helps. So Chris and I didn't really know what we were dealing with and like we kind of just like ignored it because I, well, I told him to ignore it and then I ignored it and I didn't deal with it. But for one thing, like for, for one thing, having both of you fully understand the situation is necessary. Um, fully explaining to Chris like everything I feel, everything I experience, sending him links to information on generalized anxiety disorder for him to fully understand um, helps me feel more comfortable. First off, like talking to him about it and sharing about it because I was like, I don't want him to think I'm crazy. I don't want him to think I'm like freaking out for no reason and being like super like emotional and. Um, I don't even know what the word is for that, but just like super extra, I guess, with it. It wasn't like something that I was making up. It's not something that I can fully control and it's like a part of my life, a part of who I am. And it's gonna be a part of my relationship if he's with me. And so, yeah, just having him fully understand what was going on, what I was experiencing really helped first off. Um, another thing is with panic attacks specifically and with me feeling anxiety specifically like him coming up to me and like saying like, oh it's, everything's gonna be okay don't worry like that just like makes me so much crazier and it freaks me out even more and it's something that i kind of tell him like don't say because at that moment at that time like i'm like nothing's gonna be okay like i feel like everything in the world is going wrong and my life is going to hell or whatever um so i just Honestly, I know that's like the weirdest thing to say. I'm pulling up. I have I like wrote it down on my phone. But that's the weirdest thing to say, but honestly it helps me so much like not hearing those things coming out of his mouth. I don't know why. It stresses me out. And also along with both of those things, him understanding like he can't I guess he can't fix, fix the situation and he shouldn't try to fix the situation. I don't want him to feel responsible for what's going on or feel responsible for fixing what is going on. Um, again, like him fully understanding generalized anxiety disorder, what is going on, what I feel, um, what I'm experiencing has helped in that sense as well. And then another thing is I just tell him just because I'm feeling this way doesn't mean you need to like drop everything and help me every single time. Doesn't mean you need to like bring yourself down and feel what I'm feeling or like take a step back from like your happiness or your positivity or whatnot. Um, and try to like fix the situation or experience or fully understand what I'm feeling. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I just tell him to be calm, um, to not freak out with me, but also to not like try to convince me that everything's gonna be okay. And him just like acting completely normally, uh, being there for like anything I need, like I need a hug right now, please, like just whatever, like cuddle me, whatever that's when he knows to step in. Don't freak out, don't change like what is going on in your life because it's gonna make me feel more comfortable, I guess. Kind of just like go with my flow and um, I'll tell you when I need you. Not in like a selfish way or like a bossy way, but just in a way that 
we know exactly what's going to help the situation and that's what we do. And lastly, just talking about it. So if he ever wants to ask me, like, you know, what's going on? Like, what are you feeling right now? What exactly is, like, what exactly... What exactly is influencing this anxiety? How can we avoid this in the future? Um, talking it through, like I was mentioning before, like opening up about it, it's necessary. And with him, it's like a constant thing, but in the best way. I am so grateful to have someone who like fully supports me and understands my situation and wants to help me out, who doesn't judge me for what's going on, even though people don't usually judge me for it, but um, just like fully understanding. And being fully open to working through it is awesome. Um, I'm so grateful I could cry. <laughs> I, feel really, I feel really emotional right now. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so I think this video is going to be really long, so I'm going to stop it here. If you guys have any questions or comments or concerns or anything, leave them down below. Um, I would love to chat more about this. And I'm glad that I can make a video like this. I really hope that this helps anyone who can help. Um, I'm glad that I have the opportunity to have a platform to share this sort of thing on. That is all for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you guys have any more video requests, leave them down below. Love you guys. See you on Friday.